Next up, snare drum. Okay. And uh, this is like, this got to be one of the easier snare drums I've ever recorded. And again, we're, we're combining several mics here, and I've got one extra track here, so we're going to just get rid of that because uh, we're not using a trigger on this track. And if you guys have watched my videos, every now and then I will use uh, triggers on the snare, not to actually trigger a sample, but to open and close a gate. I'll actually move it physically ahead in the track. Basically, I've got three sounds going on here for my snare. I've got um, a 57, and then I've got a Lewitt condenser, and I think we got a 57 underneath. I could be wrong. We definitely got a bottom mic somewhere going on. And um, yeah, I just use it as a little bit of fill. A bottom snare mic can be a little papery. It's not to my liking. You know, 57 is the standard, of course. But I like to pair that up with a uh, small diaphragm condenser to just get a little bit more thwack out of it. So yeah, you're listening to the same, we, let's listen to like a different passage here and uh, see what's going on here with the snares. Cause um, yeah, it's got a few rolls and whatnot coming up and uh, this should be interesting. So let's start out here. Just see what we get here for our groove. So throw on the main drum bus here. Yeah, told you guys. Yeah, Matt Star is just simply amazing. The drum in question here is a 5.5-inch uh, Ludwig Superphonic, the most recorded snare in history. And I've been really getting into Ludwig drugs as of late. I've got a 6.5 Superphonic that's wound up on an awful lot of demos. Anyway, yeah, so uh, let's take a look at uh, what's going on here with the 57. If we, that's, uh, that's our drum bus. Let's go on to our snare bus here. So I got three mics going on there. We got 57. There's our condenser and our bottom mic. So it's mainly the 57 on this one. On the metal stuff, um, I find myself using a lot more of the condenser than the 57, but you know, the 57 is just sounding great here um, in a rock sense. So yeah, let's go with that. As you can hear, I got a fair amount of reverb going on on the snare. So we're just going to clean everything up here for a minute. So I'm just going to mute out. And just take a listen, you know, to the snare mic by itself here. We're going to take a listen here. And I'm going to take you guys through the signal chain again. It's not a lot of processing going on on this one as well. So as usual, I've got you know, the virtual channel going on and a little bit of, you know, the SSL thing going on. A lot of drive, just want to get a little bit of crunch going on. A little bit of pre-EQ. I don't even have any post-EQ going on here. So a little bit of 10K. You know, 3.2K, maybe just a little bit of brightness there. Uh, a little cut at uh, 400 hertz, 416 hertz there. Three dBs down, and then a little boost at 170 hertz just to kind of fill in the bottom a little bit. Rolling off at 50 hertz, no, no distortion or anything like that, so here's on and off. Just kind of adding a little bit of crispness to it. Not a lot. And next up in the chain is the slate lift. We've got it set to punchy and silky, and this thing's just great. You can just abuse the hell out of this plugin, and it's going to sound awesome. Yeah. But this mic doesn't need a lot of silk. And again, you don't want to go overdo with the punchiness as well. This is a pretty full-sounding mic. And I get my snares by combining a bunch of mics, not just one. So it's not just one mic that works. And you're going to see how I combine it with the overheads and the rooms and make it kind of all fit together. Like I said, a lot of things have to happen at once 
you know, to make the mix really happen. So this is just one small piece of the puzzle here. And a little compression. Again, slow attack, semi-fast release, no makeup gain. We're just set the threshold so we get about 5 dBs of compression. 4 to 1 ratio. You know, a little bit of EQ, little gentle compression. And when you've got really clean, great signals, you don't need a lot of processing to make it sound good. So again, dry. And processed. So there's our three snare mics. I'm going to just kind of bring up the group. Now, I don't have any gating going on in the top mics. Let me zoom in here. Let's take a look here. You can hear a little bit of the kick drum. You can hear a little bit of ghosting. Now, if we take the gate off, let's take a listen. You know what? Maybe we'll go with the gate because I want to hear a bit more of that ghosting. And um, this is ghosting is something I've struggled with for the longest time. And I find that if you just basically have a bottom snare mic on, you can get that ghosting and crank that up a little bit uh, without having to worry about hi-hat bleed and gating all that. So if you're gating your top mics, you might want to ungate your bottom mic and get that ghosting sound going on. Because a lot of drummers like throwing that in and then just so they can yell at you for uh, not getting the ghosting in there in the final mix. At least that's what I think they're doing it for anyway. Okay, Matt's probably the exception. Uh, apologies there to Matt. Um, he's ghosting because he knows what the hell he's doing. Guys I have coming in my shoes, studio are usually just showing off.